And this video is going to cover problems 33 through 38 on this chapter 2 exam review. And 33 through 38 is going to ask you to go ahead and sketch a graph of each line. So we have some equations and we just want to go ahead and graph them. So in order to graph, we kind of need to know a couple of things. We need to know a starting point or what we call a y-intercept so we can plot a point there. And then we can use the slope to propagate more points uh, and then draw our line. Okay, so our y-intercept here is this positive 2. So I'm going to go up here, plus 2 draw a line. And I know my slope is negative 2, which I could say is negative 2 over 1, which would be a negative 2 over a positive 1, or a positive 2 over a negative 1. And the reason I like to have both of these is because one will propagate points to the right, and one will propagate points to the left. So I might not necessarily need both directions, uh, and sometimes I can't even go in one of the directions, maybe because of the way the slope is. But let's see what happens. So this is a negative 2 slope, so we know that our line must be decreasing coming downward. So negative 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1, negative 2 over 1, and we can do that. Or we can go up 2 and back 1, up 2 and back 1. And notice all of these points will be collinear, and if you recall, collinear just means they're in a line. So they're all single file, they form a line. So we'll draw our nice line which goes through all of those points. Not a perfect line, but there you go. So y equals negative 2x plus 2. Notice my line extends past the edges of the graph and it has arrows on both sides indicating that it extends indefinitely in both directions. On number 34, my equation is x equals negative 4. So I know right away this is going to be a vertical line, and it's going to pass through the x-intercept of negative 4. So I can go negative 4 and then draw some other points that would cause this to be vertical, because it's just straight up and down. So I can bring in my straight edge here, my little note card that I'm using, and I can just go ahead and draw that line. So x equals negative 4 is a vertical line right there. Okay, number 35, the equation is y equals 3. And since uh, there's no x value, I know this is a horizontal line, the slope is 0, and it's going to cross through the y-intercept of 3. So right there, and if it's a horizontal line, I can plot some more points that would cause this to be horizontal. And no points necessarily... Um, I mean, they're not specific points, I'm just kind of plotting some things here. So I know it's horizontal, and I know it goes through a positive 3. So there's my line right there, drew with my note card straight edge, and there is a horizontal line that passes through 3 on the y-intercept, or the y-axis, I mean. So there you go, number 35. In number 36, I have y equals 6x plus 1. So I know the slope is going to be 6, or 6 over 1. So I could write it as a positive 6 over a positive 1, or a negative 6 over a negative 1. So both of these slopes would be nice. And again, you can use them because this one's going to propagate points toward the right, and this one's going to propagate points toward the left. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. We know that we're going to start up here at 1, so positive 1. And then from that point, we're going to go up 6. Oh, ran out of line, didn't we, on our graph? So sometimes we can't use this because we run out of room on our graph, but let's try the other one. Down 6, so back 6, and then see, down 6, then back 1 right here. There we go. And make sure this is a positive slope, so ultimately it should be increasing, which it looks like it will be. So now, when I grab my handy dandy note card, I can draw my nice line have my arrows on either side indicating that it goes indefinitely in both directions and there's my line slope is 6 passes through the y axis at 1 so 6x plus 1 for number 37 we're given the equation but this equation is not in slope intercept form quite yet so I can help it along a little bit uh, I rewrote it down here so negative 4 plus 3x equals net equals 2y so I can divide everything by 2 to finish getting y all by itself, and when I do that, uh, I end up having negative 2 and then a 3 halves x. So I'm going to use the symmetric property of equality and flip the things around so the y instead of the right is the left, 
And then I'm going to rewrite this as 3 halves x minus 2. So there's the equation of the line. And now that's what I want to graph. So I'll go ahead and rewrite it. I had y equals 3 halves x minus 2. So I start at minus 2, this negative 2 down here, because of the y-intercept. And then using my slope, I'm going to go up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, or I could go down 3 and back 2. Okay, so I have some dots there. So I'm going to bring over my straight edge, and I'm going to see what that looks like whenever I graph this. I'll connect all those dots with a nice straight line. Put arrows on both sides of my line both ends of it indicating that it extends indefinitely in both directions. And here's my line. I had a positive slope, so I knew my line would be increasing, and it crossed at negative 2 right down there on the y-axis. Number 38 is the final problem in this section, and it's 5x minus 4 equals negative 4y. And again, like the previous problem, it was not put in slope-intercept form for us, so we'll have to manipulate it a little bit. So I rewrote it down here. Notice my y is almost by itself. If I were just to divide both sides by negative 4, divide all those terms, I'll get y on the right side, and then I'll get this negative 5 fourths x plus 1. Because the negative will come up top, and then these two negatives ultimately cancel out, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. And then I can use my symmetric property of equality to flip those things around. And so it's going to be y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that up here so I can see it while I'm graphing. So y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 1. I know it'll start at 1 on the y-axis, because that's my y-intercept. And my slope will be a negative 5 fourths. So it'll be a negative 5 over a positive 4, or it'll be a positive 5 over a negative 4 because both of these will form and go to a negative 5 fourths when they cancel out with positives, negatives, and that kind of thing. So, if we use the first one, negative 5, so we'll go down 5 and then over 4. We can only do that once because then we run out of space. Or I can go up 5 and back 4. Then I have three points, and I'll bring over my line here. So bring over my straight edge to draw my line, and there we go right there. Notice that my slope was negative, so I knew that my line would be decreasing, which it is. So number 38, there's the graph of y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 1.